How's it going traders? I hope you're all well and I hope you all have had an amazing weekend. Pips of Persia here coming to you with a weekly market outlook video preparing for the trading week of 11th of March 2019 to 15th of March 2019. Now <clears throat> as usual before we get started, disclaimers, these setups are purely for educational purposes and by no means require any action. Your capital is at risk, therefore you should never risk more than what you are willing to lose. Past profits do not guarantee future results either. Uh, from the pairs that I will be analysing, make sure to take notes, make sure to save a few of them that you like, keep an eye on them for the coming week. Uh, again, as usual, if your analysis disagrees with me, please stick to your own analysis and ignore mine. That's the best way for you to learn, through your own analysis. If you win, happy days. If, uh, if you lose, then you know where to look and you know where to look to realize what sort of stuff you could have done differently. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I have quite a few pairs analyzed for this week, so I'm going to be kind of flying through the pairs as quickly as I possibly can. Now, Australian dollar against the Canadian dollar. Uh, this is the eight hour time frame that we are currently looking at. We can see that the market is declining very nicely within this downtrend, within this channel. Uh, you have your high, you have your low, you have your lower high, lower low, lower high formed there. And we can see that our lower high was formed at the Fib level, previous reversal zone, as well as a tap off of the trend line. On the eight hour time frame, we can see multiple wick rejections as well. In my personal opinion, we are setting up for a very nice decline, potentially, even down to the minus 27 Fibonacci over there. Potentially even down to the minus 27 Fibonacci. Now, in terms of um, potential take profit zones, that's where your analysis, uh, your pure technical analysis will come in play. This, in my opinion, would be a good uh, kind of uh, reversal zone. Therefore, that would be a good take profit zone. This will be the second one. And our final take profit could be at minus 27. Very, very kind of simple analysis for Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Next pair, Australian dollar versus the Swiss franc. Uh, quite similar in terms of uh, analysis to Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar. I mean, we're bearish on Australian dollar, uh, dollar currently. Uh, however, in this case, we can still see the, uh, the normal head and shoulder formation, the left shoulder, head, right shoulder, indicating uh, a potential move to the downside. Uh, we can see that the market is kind of finding it difficult to maintain the price uh, below this previous reversal zone over there. So the two possible scenarios for me would be a final increase to the trend line up here, which would be a third touch of that trend line, or fourth touch if you count that wick rejection as well, or a break, a clear break below that line over there, a clear retest, candlestick confirmations for a nice sell down. 0 0.696 will be my final take profit zone as in if I go ahead and enter the trade around that point, it will be a very nice 100, 120 pip, pip decline. Very, very nice trade. Uh, Australian dollar against the New Zealand dollar. Uh, another pair that I'm quite bearish at. Let me zoom in on the four hour time frame so you can see the analysis a little bit more clearly. We can see that we've actually maintained the price below the previous uh, lower low over there. High, low, lower high, lower low. We maintain the price below the previous lower low. Very good indication for a downtrend. I want to see if we get a rise up to retest that broken through zone, as well as a potential third tap off of this drawn downtrend line. This will be the sort of setups I'll be looking at for a nice decline down. I'm not going to uh, kind of uh, outrule this possibility, but I like this setup a little bit more. I like to see a nice, de uh, nice increase to retest that broken through zone, tap off the trend line, and the decline to start there. Very, very simple analysis. Very simple analysis. Uh, pound versus the Australian dollar. Now, this is a pair that I'm going to keep an eye on because on a high time frame, when I look at it, I can see that the trend line that I have drawn over here, one touch, second touch, third touch, break and retest. We've actually come back to retest that... Um, uh, that, that broken through trend line. So in my opinion, the bullish move can actually start here. The technicals for pound itself are completely uh, aiming at a bullish pound. However, we are getting closer and closer to Brexit, so it is getting more and more dangerous to trade the pound. So be very, very careful taking the trades against pound. Um, but one scenario would be an increase the rise to start literally from here. The more likely scenario that I would like to see is a decline down to our key Fib level and then the increase to start. So Monday and Tuesday for the market to decline with a choppy momentum, then a sudden bullish move to start from there. 
Uh, I know this kind of brings us back within the uh, downtrend line that I've drawn, but don't forget the larger, well, in this case, the smaller scale, but the more dominant picture over here where we have a trend line going up and we do have a fib level there as well. So this setup is actually looking quite good to me as well. Pound versus the Japanese yen. Similar story, uh, the pound versus Japanese yen opened up with a gap. I'm not going to really care about the gap right now. I'm still going to kind of remain bearish on pound versus Japanese yen until it comes down and taps off my key fib, le fib level as well as the um, trend line. Again, very similar to pound Australian. Um, I'm going to potentially execute buy positions up to at least the 149.5 zone somewhere around there, but we can technically ride this all the way up to the 150 or the minus 27 zone as well. Again, provided we get good candlestick confirmations and everything, but currently on a smaller scale, we can see our low, high, higher, low, high, high, higher, low, going for the next higher high, executing that buy to, uh, to go in basically. Pound versus the US dollar, again, pound pairs are all similar. In this case, we do have an inverted, a larger scale inverted head and shoulder formation as well, where we did break above the neckline. However, the market declined. So I'm going to execute uh, my potential trades at a tap off of, the, of a given trend line. Doesn't necessarily have to be this one and potentially a fib level. So it's just kind of the patience, patience game right now to, uh, for us to see where uh, the pound will, um, will reverse. If we get a break below this trend line or below, let's say, this higher low over here, then obviously my whole attitude against this is going to change. Uh, let's have a look at the fundamentals for the coming week as well before we move on to any other pair. Uh, as we can see, we do have a lot of US dollar high impact news and a lot of pound high impact news as well. Practically the entire week is just US dollar and pound high impact news. So this is the sort of reason why you want to be very, very careful training the pound versus the US dollar. Make sure to have Forex Factory open. Make sure to keep an eye on the uh, on the news so they don't kind of catch you by uh, surprise. New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. Uh, head and shoulder formation, as you can see, indicating a potential decline. We've gotten a break and retest of a smaller scale trend line as well. One touch, two touch, break, retest. So I'm going to remain bearish on this pair. I'm going to remain completely bearish on this pair. Now, doesn't necessarily have to decline from where it is right now. No, there's a few different scenarios that can happen over here. We can get uh, a rise up to this trend line, for example, over there. Uh, a third touch of that trend line over there. We can put our Fibonacci in place to see where the market is likely to come up to. You know, it could be the 61.8 to 71% zone, or we could come up and tap off that trend line. Uh, it could, the decline could start now. Um, it can break over here, retest it, and then continuation to the downside. As you can see, there's quite a few different scenarios that can happen in this case. This is where candlestick confirmations come in play. I don't care there's different scenarios. In general, I'm remaining bearish on New Zealand dollar versus US dollar because the markets have formed a head and shoulder formation. I can see the market's likely to decline. Therefore, I'm going to have my different scenarios in place and I'm going to see which ones get respected the, um, the most which one is the best potential entry and which one provides me with the best candlestick confirmation for that sell. So don't forget that. US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. I'm going to remain bullish on this pair as well. Two different scenarios I can imagine for it to happen. Inverted head and shoulder formation. That's not satisfied yet. It's still got a, a little bit of a room to go up. Okay. So, um, for this current pair, I'm going to assume a potential decline to retest this broken through zone. If the market declines, my second point of entry will be this zone. Again, I'm going to see if we get a nice candlestick confirmation point, point into a buy from around this zone. If not, I'm going to wait for a decline around that zone and see if I get the candlestick confirmations. Candlestick confirmations before executing any trade. That's key. Never forget that. Euro versus the Canadian dollar. Uh, on a little bit shorter scale, such as the hourly chart, we can see that we've actually formed another head and shoulder formation over there. Okay. Very kind of uh, small scale head and shoulder. Um, however, the main, the larger picture over here is this key zone that I've drawn in the market, which was that previous reversal zone where the market reacted to twice. That was broken to the upside, but we ended up bringing the price back within. Okay, the euro, in my opinion right now, is really not strong at all. We got really bad news for euro last week. So I'm going to assume a potential bullish move for Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday to be a more or less complete decline for euro against the Canadian dollar. But let's see. Let's see how, how that plays out. It could go um, kind of 
different scenarios. US dollar versus the Swiss franc. I believe this was one of the pairs that I kind of just saved to have a look at because it was um, it was going against my major analysis with uh, for US dollar. And the reason behind that is because this massive daily divergence that we've come into. Um, we can assume that we've gotten a fake out. One touch, two touch, three touch, fake out. Because the price was actually closed within the trend line. Okay. And we've actually gotten a daily divergence on our MACD. That's very, very strong indication for a sell. Very, very strong indication for a sell. So I've kind of uh, I've saved this pair just to keep an eye on it to see how it reacts with uh, uh, with US dollar. Um, the reason why I'm not so fond of this pair is because I am quite bullish on the dollar index itself. Where uh, similar to uh, US dollar versus Canadian dollar, we do have an inverted head and shoulder formation on the dollar index. Uh, indicating a potential buy, we have a low, a high, a higher low, a higher high, awaiting a potential uh, higher low. And uh, we actually got a reaction. This this analysis worked to kind of perfection, where we got a reaction of the previous reversal zone, fib level, and a massive, massive rise. So my possible scenarios, the possible the scenarios I'm kind of thinking of for dollar right now is maybe a little decline, but another bullish move up for the dollar. I'm majorly bullish on the dollar. Therefore, I wouldn't really want to remain bearish on uh, US dollar versus Swiss franc. It doesn't really go with my analysis with US dollar versus uh, US dollar currency index, sorry. Um, but it's definitely a pair to keep an eye on and let's see if this divergence on MACD works well. If you guys don't know what divergence is, um, I'm going to post another video on divergence a little bit later. But um, in simple terms, is when your market creates a high high and your oscillator creates a lower low, indicating a potential decline. Uh, CHF JPY. We can see on a daily time frame we've gotten a reaction of this trend line. You know the market declined by nearly 200 pips when it touched that trend line. Uh, got a three pin formation over there as well, and the market was on a free fall. Any sort of pullback that I get from this move, I'm going to execute further sells on this pair. I'm going to execute further sells on CHF JPY. Again, possible stuff that we can do is we can go ahead on our, uh, and put our Fibonacci in. Let's zoom into the four hour time frame. I can assume a potential rise to my fib level to retest the trend line again and a decline and um, and potential um, sell entries to come in. Another thing that I can assume is this uh, reversal zone over here where we've gotten a lot of reactions. I can assume a break and retest and then continuation downwards for a quick intraday trade. Uh, but I'm going to be favoring the rise to the key fib level and then the decline a little bit more. In this case, we can actually ride this pair down all the way to the minus 61.8. Euro versus the Japanese yen. I'm going to again majorly on a larger uh, larger scale. I'm going to remain bearish on this pair as well. Uh, we ended up breaking below this trend line over there, and you might be asking yourself, how comes I've started my trend line there? Is because this massive wick was caused by um, by by news basically. That's how I'm going to um, uh, summarize it. Japanese yen being the safe haven at the start start of the year. Uh, all the big algorithms just started to buy a lot of Japanese yen. Massive, massive demand for Japanese yen. The price of Japanese yen went up, hence euro versus Japanese yen fell, uh, fell down. So I'm not going to count that wick in my analysis, and I'm going to start from the next wick that I can see. One touch, second touch, we actually got a break of the trend line to the downside. And now we can see that the market has stalled around this previous reversal zone over there. The market has slowed down, the market has reversed. So what are the possible scenarios I can be looking at? I can be looking at a rise to retest the broken through trend line and test this smaller scale down trend line and then potential sales to come in at that point. I believe if we manage to maintain the price below this zone, the market has a lot of room to decline and we're bearish on Euro, uh, on, uh, Euro in general as well. Uh, Euro versus the Australian dollar, quite similar to Euro versus Japanese yen, awaiting a potential push up for the decline to come in play. Now I can potentially draw my zone a little bit lower. Um, on the four hour time frame, I can go ahead and put my Fibonacci in place as well. So we can see that that previous reversal zone is lining up very, very nicely with our key Fib level. All of these wicks that you can see over here, it's lining up with our key Fib level. If we get this rise up to the, let's say, 61.8 zone on a smaller time frame, such as the hourly, we actually form a very, very nice looking head and shoulder formation like this. So in my opinion, the market is likely to decline, just waiting to get better entries. That's all. 
Uh, another potential entry, if the market doesn't do that, is simply we go ahead and uh, put our neckline in place. That's not going to be the best of neckline, necklines right now because the, le uh, the right shoulder is not very defined. But we can take potential sales at the break and retest of that, uh, of that line as well. Euro versus New Zealand dollar. Again, Euro pairs are all kind of similar. They've all had a massive bearish move, awaiting a pullback for potential sales to come in place. Again, broken through, broken to the downside of this trend line, awaiting a pullback and the continuation to the downside. Very, very simple analysis. My final take profit zone will be 1.6348, which is this previous reversal zone down here. Again, all of these, um, all of these analysis that I'm kind of waiting for a pullback, I will be sending updates for every single one of these to um, on my Telegram. I will be sending updates. I will be sending uh, if if my attitude changes about a certain pair. So make sure you guys are on my Telegram. The link will be in the description. New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, working with a little bit of an Elliott wave here. Um, not the perfect Elliott wave that I would like to see that it reacts to our uh, key Fibonacci levels uh, and uh, how the measured moves within the Elliott waves work. But I'm working with simple wave theory over here. I'm expecting a potential decline down to this trend line, a rise up from this trend line to our previous trend line up there on a larger time frame. If I show this to you, one touch, second touch, third touch, expecting a potential fourth touch. Don't forget the kind of um, the pattern that we are forming here. A clear bearish flag. And waiting for a potential tapper for the higher of that trend line to execute my sales based on that. But on a larger time frame, again, I'm going to remain bearish on uh, as a DJPY in a, long, a longer, term tra uh, longer term trade for a longer term trade. Um, however, when it comes and touches this trend line over here, if I get a good candlestick confirmation, such as a nice hammer formation, uh, bullish engulfing, morning star, etc., etc., I will execute potential buys. I will execute buys up to that trend line, to that zone up there. Um, again, another pair to definitely keep an eye on. New Zealand dollar versus Canadian dollar, quite similar to New Zealand dollar versus um, Japanese yen. I know 78.6 is in the best of kind of reversal zones for um, Fibonacci. But again, on a larger time frame, we can see the trend line coming down. <coughs> we can see the trend line coming down. And uh, I would like to see if I get a nice tap off of a key, of a key fib level uh, slash my trend line over there. Okay, I would like to see if I get a nice reaction off that uh, to, to uh, execute potential sell positions on uh, New Zealand dollar versus the uh, Canadian dollar. You can go ahead and put in certain lines and certain zones as well. Um, this perhaps would be the better one. Three wick touches. Um, so the decline can actually start right here, right now, because we've got a nice candlestick confirmations on the eight hour time frame as well. And some divergence coming into play as well, but I'm not the sort of person who would like to execute any trades before uh, the London session, or maybe in Monday in total, I, I don't really not like to execute a lot of trades. So I'm gonna uh, I'm going to have to wait for the London session, maybe even the New York session to uh, reanalyze this pair. Uh, US dollar versus the Japanese yen. Again, perfectly going up within this channel. Low, high, high, low, high, 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 low, high, 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 low, and a key fib level right over there. Expecting a very easy bullish move up to the minus 27. Very, very easy move up. Uh, very easy, more or less, let's say 150 pip move up. Uh, definitely something that I'm going to keep an eye on for, uh, for this week to see if we can buy it up to... Uh, up to the high of the channel as well as the key fib level, uh, the minus 27 extension. Finally, gold. Um, we have actually gotten an, another really nice kind of um, wave pattern on the 8 hour time frame, 4 hour time frame, whatever for gold. Uh, we have actually maintained the price below this previous reversal zone, which was our previous um, higher low. Uh, the price broke down, our bullish trend has officially turned bearish. Now this is our pullback to retest the broken through zone, as well as uh, the broken through zone. I'm expecting a tap off of this trend line as well. One touch, two touch, expecting a third touch. So it's very, very simple what I'm looking at. I'm expecting the price to uh, have a reaction around that zone, around 1303, around that price, for a nice decline to come in, at least to a double bottom zone over there. This would be a very nice 250 pip move if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 220 pip move. So it'd be a very nice 220 pip move. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Now, 
Regarding the pairs that I'm keeping an eye on, this was quite a few different pairs that I kind of went through. Um, but that's all the pairs that I'll be focusing on for this week. Again, if I happen to see any other pair that I will uh, want to trade, I will be updating my Telegram on that. Do not forget to check Forex Factory this week. There's a lot of high impact news for US dollar and, uh, and pound. Definitely something you want to keep an eye on, especially stuff like this, where there's a speech. Um, make sure at what time it is. And if you're awake at that time, obviously that's uh, midnight London time. It would be a very, very good idea to watch the speech and see um, what is said, whether the general tone is hawkish or dovish, okay? Now, um, if you can't stay up for that, after the news is released, there will be some stories related here. Just read the headlines. Do not read the comments on Forex Factory. I do not recommend doing that at all. Just read the headlines for yourself and decide whether, in your opinion, dollar's going to gain strength or lose strength, etc., etc., etc. Uh, as I said, I usually wait for London or New York session to see how the market has settled from the weekend and um, and from some news and reanalyze if I need to. And always remember to wait for price action before you execute any trades. Make sure to join my Telegram channel to receive the updates. I'll leave the link in the description. If you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me uh, on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the analysis. Make sure to comment below and say whether you agree with my analysis or whether you disagree with my analysis. I would love to hear your guys' opinions on my analysis. Have an amazing week. Stick to your trading plan. Do not risk too much. Maximum 1-3% to of your account size. Uh, do not get too greedy. Have a long-term vision and let's smash it.